We know that there will be an economic hit with the Grey Cup being cancelled this year, but is there a positive side to it being moved to 2022? For a look at the dollars and cents, I'm joined by University of Regina Economics Professor Jason Childs. Jason, we've heard the city will take a $16 million hit, the hospitality industry likely even more. What's your take on the financial impact? Well, I mean, it's, for the city of Regina, it's going to be a big hit, but for the province overall, it's not going to hurt that much. A lot of the uh, economic impact of these types of events are diverted from other areas within the province and focused on the, the centre that's hosting the event. So it'll likely be end up being a small positive for Saskatoon and other regions, but it'll be a big hit here in Regina. With so many unknowns in this pandemic, people aren't able to travel, no big gatherings, meaning the Grey Cup Festival could have flopped if they forged mm. ahead. How do you weigh the risks with the benefits of holding any mass event right now? That's going to be a tough challenge. I mean, the uh, public health impact implications of putting that many people in that small space is are going to be huge. And that's something that's well outside my <laughs> bailiwick. But the... Uh, on the other side of the ledger is always the economic impact and the opportunities it creates and, and just the, the happiness and excitement. I mean, right now, all across the country and arguably all around the world, we're ready to really get into some sports and, and, and become fans again. Uh, sporting events have been basically on hold for months and there's there's we're all missing that level of excitement, that enjoyment. And I think uh, when it does come back, there will be a lot more uptake than maybe there would have been. On the financial side of things, though, is it worth teams playing if they can't make any money? Right. Well, that's the real challenge with the CFL. The CFL is so dependent on its gate, uh, much more so than other sports. Other sports get a lot more of their revenue through TV rights and, and advertising. But the CFL is a gate-dependent league. So if, they are, if there aren't fans in the stands, then they're not making any money. Now, that said, if you go away for a year, if you don't put a product on the field for an entire year, fans will find something else to do. You'll see some drop off and, and some of those fans may not come back. So it might be worth it to the CFL to play for a year, even if they are going to lose money at it, but to keep the product in front of the fans and keep fans focused on the league. The CFL has been asking for federal assistance. Teams have been telling people they can donate their season ticket funds. Is this league sustainable going forward? Um, it has been up until this point. It's going to depend on how people react to uh, the opportunity to go back to games and to, to watch the games on TV. So if we see uh, a large uptick in... TV viewership for sports generally and the CFL specifically, uh, it'll be viable. Um, it's been on the edge of viable or it's been moderately successful as a league for the last several years. Uh, they're they were looking to expand to the Atlantic provinces, Halifax specifically, and you're not going to do that if you're not viable. Uh, a complete stoppage of play like this and, and the complete loss of revenue, again, through the loss of the gate, uh, makes it really hard to survive. And finally, moving this to 2022, is there a chance this would be more successful than it would be in 2020 if it happens? I, yeah, I think that's highly likely the Regina will benefit more out of having it in 2022 than it would have had uh, going forward as things are today. Um, you know, there's no guarantees we're going to have a lot of interprovincial travel. People may still be really nervous about this and, and just stay home and opt out of the event. Uh, because of the risks associated with gathering those numbers. So I think this is actually going to work out reasonably well for Saskatchewan in the long haul, but it's going to take some time to get back there. Jason, thanks so much for this. Thank you. Jason Childs is an Associate Professor of Economics at the University of Regina.